This is day five and I finally got the image of the rough grouse drumming. Every year in the spring, I can hear the rough grouse drumming near my home, but I never have the time to photograph the bird. This year, I have some spare time, so I've decided to take this project on. Okay, I finally found the log that the rough grouse uses to drum on. I'm sure this is it. And the reason why I know this is it is because it's a grouse feather. So it probably dislodged while he was drumming. It was sitting here amongst the leaves. Also, is there some scat, some grouse scat up here on top of the log. So those are two. There's another feather right here. There's more feathers. This, I'm very sure this is the log that the grouse uses. So I'll be setting up my blind off of this log. So I just got to figure out how to set up here. One of the problems I'm going to have is that the sun rises here and I want to set the, the blind up at this end of the log because it gives me a clear shot. Any place else, there's a lot of small maple saplings that are in the way. And I'd really like to get a side shot. I don't want to get a head-on shot. I'm guessing he's either facing this direction and drumming or he's facing that direction but because this drops off it gives him a, a really good view here and uh, and he, he's probably going to face this way looking for a female grouse to come up the hill to him they do a lot of walking and uh, a female may not just fly in she might be just walking all the way up here to him this like when he leaves sometimes off of these things is that he'll just walk away you know you haven't disturbed him too bad if he just slowly walks away when he flies away, then you know you've really disturbed him. So he wasn't here when I came in, which is really good. I don't want him to to uh, to give up on this spot. There's lots of other stumps around and rocks, mossy rocks and, and beautiful locations for him to sit on and drum. And uh, But I think this is going to be my spot. Uh, so that's the plan. I'm going to uh, set up a blind here. And uh, this is good. Finally found this thing. done I'm done putting in my blind it's all set up uh, the location I've picked is looking right down the log uh, I think the grouse is going to be facing downhill and I know the Sun's gonna be coming up behind the grouse which is not what I want but I don't have a choice um, the, uh, but if he's here first thing in the morning um, that could be tough if he's here in the evening this will be great um, from what I've heard, when I can hear him, it sounds like he could be here even in the middle of the day. So um, I guess I won't find out when's the best time to photograph him until I get in that blind. So I'm going to give it about two days, let this blind sit here for two days, and, uh, and let the grouse become acclimated to it. Um, it's a static object. There's nothing to blow around, nothing to move. I'm going to close up these windows so there's nothing that can flop around. I've got these guidelines here to hold it in place in case it's windy. Um, the, uh, the, all the branches that could be in the way, I've made sure I've cleared them. I knew the, and, uh, as far as background goes, it's not perfect, but I'm going to be shooting at F4 with a 500 millimeter lens, uh, roughly 30 feet from him, 40 feet possibly. So, uh, it should be good. I should be able to soften up that background and, uh, I think I'm ready to go. This is day five and I finally got the image of the rough grouse drumming. It's been four days of nothing. A few deer have walked through, red squirrel, that's it. And this morning here, I got in really, really early. I got in the, basically it was pitch black and I couldn't see a thing while I was walking in here. It was cold and, uh, and the, the leaves were crunching and it just sounded like a 
heard of a buffalo coming through here, but uh, I got in, I set up uh, pitch black, and I didn't put on any flashlight, put all my gear together in the dark, and uh, it, it, I wasn't here much more than maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and next thing you know, I could hear this drumming. And I'm thinking, oh, it sounds like it's a long ways away. I couldn't see anything yet. And finally, 10 minutes later, there was a little more light. And in front of me, sitting on the log, was the rough grouse. It's amazing, the rough grouse sounds like he's a long ways away, even though he's only 30 feet in front of me. Yet, when you hear him from a long ways away, he sounds the same. It's amazing how that sound travels. So I was really expecting, when I was this close to the grouse, for it to be a lot louder than it was, but it wasn't. And he continued to drum right through into the light, which offered me a chance to capture some fantastic images. And it's interesting, even pushing the live view button frightened him. And so what I did is when I pushed the live view button, I waited till he was drumming, making that noise, and then I put it on. And then I could, then I could film him and photograph him. And, uh, and it worked really well. Um, it's, uh, it lasted, I probably had 10 times that he drummed. And it's funny because he would drum and then he would walk up and down the log and he would drum again. And he always drummed facing one direction, facing downhill so he could see a long ways away. He could see if there was a, a predator or a, uh, or a female grouse coming up the hill. And, uh, but after 10 times, finally I heard this crunch, crunch and the grouse jumped off the log and ran away. And in came a white-tailed deer. <laughs> So I thought it would have been me that scared him away, but it ended up being the uh, white-tailed deer. But it was a great morning. I don't think I'm going to come back and do this again. It's just, it's really difficult to walk through the uh, forest in the dark, carrying your camera gear and, and with all the branches sticking out, you could get one in your eye. You know, you could trip over one, but uh, this is something I've been wanting to capture for years and years and years. So this is, this was fantastic. <laughs>